This story is about a man who killed for fun, just to abuse and satisfy himself without any remorse. Through life, he was a bully who literally got away with murder. And having committed murders in 1966 and being sentenced to death, to only having it reduced to a life sentence, and worse than that, actually being released into the population to do it all over again. This story is about serial killer Kenneth Allen Macduff. Kenneth Allen Macduff was born on March 21st, 1946, in 201 Linden Street, in a town called Rosebud, in Central Texas. He was the fifth child out of six to parent John Allen and Addie Macduff. Addie was known around town as the pistol-packing mama because she had threatened a school bus driver with a gun when they had kicked Kenneth's older brother off the bus. Macduff was a well-known bully where he lived, including at his school, always picking on younger and smaller children, but it wasn't until he lost a fight that he decided to quit and work as a labourer for his dad's construction business. Macduff's criminal record began in 1964, when he was 18 years old, he was convicted of 12 counts of burglary and attempted burglary, in which he was sentenced to 12 to 4 year prison terms, to be served concurrently. Macduff, though, made parole in December 1965. He returned to prison for a short time after being involved in the fight. It was the release of Macduff in 1989 after being convicted and sentenced to death of the murders of three teenagers in 1966 that put the fear in Rosebud and the surrounding area into overdrive. Nobody could believe that such an evil killer would be released, purely down to the changes in the law at the time having his death sentence commuted to life imprisonment. And then when, on top of all that, the state of Texas wanted to make more room in the prisons by releasing prisoners, Firstly, the ones that were lesser sentences would be released, which still wasn't enough to clear space, until they reached the likes of sadistic killer Macduff, who finally won over the parole board for release. This proved to be a fatal mistake, as it was clearly more important to clear the prisons than to protect the people on the streets. It seems that the first ever killing was one that wasn't reported. This was a rape and murder of a woman in 1964 when he was 17 years old, before the burglary convictions. The only person he told was his older brother, Lonnie, who told him to forget about it. After his release from prison from the burglaries in 1965, Macduff made a friend, Roy Dale Green, who was two years younger and looked up to Macduff. They both worked for Macduff's dad, and he was clearly in awe of everything that Macduff bragged about, including the violence and burglaries and being in prison. Although Roy Green wasn't quite sure of everything Macduff had boasted about, Kenneth soon proved himself on the night of Saturday, August the 6th, 1966. After a hard day's work, Macduff and Roy decided they wanted to go off in Macduff's car to Fort Worth, drinking beer and visiting friends. At around 10pm they drove around a town called Everman when Macduff noticed a teenage girl and two teenage boys. Robert Brand, aged 17, was with his girlfriend Edna Louise Sullivan, aged 16, and Robert's younger cousin Mark Dunman, aged 15. They were all stood next to their car in the baseball field when suddenly Macduff, who had parked over 150 yards away, walked with Roy Green over to the three teenagers and pointing his 38 Colt revolver and told all three to get in the trunk of their car. Macduff drove the teenagers car away with Roy driving Macduff's car along a highway where they ended up in a field. He ordered Edna out of the trunk and forced her into the trunk of his car and sadly fired six shots into the trunk where the teenage boys were left killing them. This now left Edna waiting for her fate as the sadistic Macduff and Green drove to another location where Macduff raped her repeatedly. And it was Green who said he was under duress to do the same. 
After this, Macduff tried to strangle Edna with a belt, borrowed from Green, but then changed his mind after grabbing a three foot long piece of broomstick that was already in his car. He then proceeded to choke Edna, eventually killing her. It was then up to Green to dump the body in some bushes. The very next day, Macduff buried the gun next to Green's garage. And then they met up with a friend, Richard Boyd. It was the day after that that Roy Green confessed to Richard Boyd's parents about what had happened on the night of the 6th of August. Their parents informed Roy's parents who managed to get Roy to turn himself in. It was then that the Falls County Sheriff, Brady Pamplin and Deputy US Marshal Thomas Parnell McNamara arrested Kenneth Macduff. This is when Macduff was sentenced to death by electric chair and Green received a 25 year sentence. In which Green was released in 1979 and Macduff's sentence was commuted to life. So after Macduff's release in 1989, he got a job at a gas station whilst attending a technical college in Waco. Seraphia Parker was found on the 14th of October 1989. She had been beaten and strangled and dumped in a field in a town called Temple which is just under 50 miles away along the I-35. Although people were convinced that Macduff had killed Seraphia, he didn't get arrested. Though he did end up in prison again on a parole violation after making death threats to a young student in Rosebud. This time Macduff was re-released December 18, 1990. Brenda Thompson was to be his next victim, a prostitute and an addict Brenda was picked up by Macduff in his vehicle. He grabbed Brenda and tied her up, and this is when they came across a police checkpoint. So Macduff parked about 50 feet away from it. Brenda started to kick and scream to get herself noticed. She kicked the windshield, damaging it, which clearly caught the police officer's attention. So when he started walking to the Macduff's car, he immediately hit the accelerator and took off down the road, nearly knocking the police officers over. The police chased after him, but Macduff was gone, and sadly the police lost him. Macduff finally ended up on Route 84 when he parked in a wooded area. Brenda Thompson was tortured to death, but her body wasn't found until 1998. On October the 15th, 1991, Virginia Deanne Moore, 17 years old, was also working as a prostitute when Macduff picked her up and went to a motel. They were witness having an argument and Regina went, then went off with Macduff in his truck and stopped by Texas State Highway 6 near Waco. Now Macduff tied Regina's arms and legs with stockings before he killed her. Virginia's body was discovered seven years later on the 29th of September 1998. It is said that it looks like Macduff was also connected to the murder of Cynthia Gonzalez, age 23, who had been found in a creek one mile west of the I-35 on the 21st of September 1991. She had been reported missing from Arlington six days earlier. Alva Hank Worley was Macduff's new accomplice and on the 29th of December 1991, both men drove to a car wash in Austin, where they kidnapped Colleen Reed, who was originally from Louisiana. He grabbed Colleen in front of witnesses before driving off with her. When Alva Worley was interviewed by police in April 1992, he admitted to raping Colleen and giving her cigarette burns, but he said he did not take part in her murder. Unfortunately, this still wasn't the end for Kenneth Macduff's killing spree as another body was found on a golf course on March the 15th, 1992, and she had been strangled and her name was Valencia Joshua. She was also a prostitute and was last seen alive knocking on Macduff's door on the 24th of February, 1992. A pregnant Melissa Northrup, 22, was a store clerk at Quick Pack in Waco. Macduff had known Melissa, as he had also worked there in the past. $250 was also stolen 
and the reason Macduff was a suspect was because he had been seen in the area at the time of Melissa's disappearance. Plus, a previous friend of his had told police that Macduff had wanted his help as he had planned to rob the store. Melissa had died on March the 1st and was found by a fisherman on April the 26th with her hands tied behind her back. She had been strangled with rope and left on the gravel pit in Dallas County. With Macduff killing in different counties in Texas, it made it difficult for the police to conduct a coordinated investigation. But as Macduff was selling drugs and had an illegal firearm, which was federal offences, the police were able to issue a warrant for an arrest. Alva Worley was picked up by police in April 1992, as he was known to be Macduff's friend, and that was when he admitted to what had happened to Colleen Reed. Meanwhile, police were looking for Macduff whilst Alva was held at the Travis County Jail. By now, Kenneth had moved to Kansas City in Missouri. He worked for a refuse company. He had changed his name to Richard Fowler. Interestingly enough, a co-worker at the refuse company watched America's Most Wanted on May 1st, 1992. He recognised Richard Fowler as the man on the TV programme as the wanted murderer. Kenneth Macduff and phoned Kansas City Police Department. On May the 4th, 1992, a team of six surveillance officers arrested Macduff as he was driving to a landfill. Coincidentally, the arresting officers were the sons of the arresting officers in 1966. Macduff was indicted on one count of capital murder and that was for Melissa Northrup's murder in McLennan County on June the 26th, 1992, and he was found guilty. Finally, on February 18th, 1993, a jury in a special punishment hearing is when jurors who are absolutely opposed to the death penalty are normally disqualified from service involving capital cases, chose to sentence Macduff to death. There were delays whilst appeals were heard, but Western District Court denied habeas corpus relief, which is a court proceeding before someone is convicted they can seek relief through petition. This is a separate criminal proceeding from their criminal case, which the prosecutor is seeking to convict them. This means that the independent habeas proceeding could end the prosecution quickly. If granted, then the prosecutors must show that they have a valid reason for detaining the person. And if detention is found to be illegal, then the detainee can be released. However, in Kenneth Macduff's case, it was denied and the execution date was for the 17th of November 1998. Macduff gave details of Colleen Reed's burial just a few weeks before his execution. And finally, the reign of terror of Kenneth Alling Macduff, inflicted on his victims and future ones, ended with him being executed by lethal injection. Please like and subscribe for more content.